When I was a lad, I used to have to sneak out of the house and lie my head off to go to the Saturday morning pictures. I was an ABC minor. Sixpence a week, or once in a while to the Empire Theatre. I had to walk three miles there and three miles back. My mother and father were Wakefield Quakers, known as the Peculiar People. It was all, Do not, thou shalt not, and do not grieve the Lord by behaving so. Plagues and fatted calves, Isaac and Moses, sacrifices and retribution. When my mother found out where I'd been, she hit me with a scrubbing brush. Here, across the back of my hand, till she drew blood. But it didn't stop me. I still went. I loved it. What's real life, I thought, compared with this? My father was a coal miner. He had a blue mark on his forehead just above where his hairline once was. A small blue cross-like scar. He explained the mark to me when my mother told him what I'd been up to. He said, this, Billy, is the mark of Satan. I have sinned and Satan has marked me. If you carry on sinning, Satan will mark you with a blue pencil. Likewise. I told him, my mum's not marked. He said, your mum's an angel. I said, angels don't hit people with scrubbing brushes. <laughs> it, it turned out it was caused by a piece of flying coal down the pit. Even now, though, the little blue mark is beginning to show. Just as I did last night. The dad and the kid. Curtain up at one, uh, ladies and gentlemen. The curtain has gone up on Cinderella at one. My farewell for kings. I was dyspepsia. <laughs> I don't know what Gwen's done with this wig. I don't think it's seen a comb since the first night. I look as if something's landed on me head and died there. <laughs> Mr. Bartlett and Mr. Jennings, your call for the wooden glitz. Uh, that's us, then. I'm not going on looking like this. Well, why is Wally doing the call? Everything all right, girls? No, it's not all right. Have you seen this wig? Looks fine from where I'm standing. Try standing over here. Oh, you're too particular, Joe. That's you, wear trouble. Looks lovely. Looks like a bit of old shag pile. God, anybody would think you were the London plate here. Yeah. Um, and how are you, Billy? It needs something. You're quiet tonight. No, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. Thank you, Ben. Give me a comb back. Here. Not your usual style. No, no, I'm fine. You're supposed to dress in these wigs every day. Yes, well, there's lots of things I'm supposed to do every day, and one of them's wardrobe. Or with Karen off and Pet having to go on, and none of the costumes fitting, you can imagine. She is off, then. Did you know, Billy? Well, somebody said something I forgot. Running round like a blue-ass play. I thought she was just late again. Nothing fits. What's the matter with her? Don't ask me. Didn't she ring in? Well, she could now, that's we know, wouldn't we? Well, she was all right this afternoon. How do you know? Well, I saw her in town. You did? By the station. What were you doing at the station? Well, I wasn't. I was going to the bank, but I just noticed her. Did she say anything? Oh, well, just hello. If I was her mother, I'd be really worried about that girl. Anyway, it would be nice if just for once we were told what was going on. I've never known anything like it. I can remember when this theatre had a number one panto. These days you don't even know who your Cinderella is. Well, he did make an announcement, Joe. I didn't hear it. You were in the shower. Well, very well. And I forgot to mention it. I'm sorry. It's not up to you to tell me. I know that. But the company manager should come round the principal's dressing rooms and tell us himself. How can he when he's running the prom corner? Well, it's the company manager. He shouldn't be running the prom corner. What's happened to Jane? Petra's gone on for Karen, and Jane's had to go on for Petra. He thought she was just late again, and he held the curtain for five minutes as it was. There. He couldn't do much more now, could he? Right now, that's all I got time for. Better now? I suppose it'll have to do. If you don't like it, don't wear it. <laughs> Charming. That's the Walsh all over. I've a bloody good mind to go on bold. For real. Mr. Bartlett and Mr. Jennings. Calling Mr. Bartlett and Mr. Jennings. Where are you? Do come on stage now, please. Danny wouldn't put up with this. The bold prima donna. Ionesco. New theatre hall. Mid-60s. Weekly record. Come on, Joe. We'll be off. 
I was very good. Look, we hadn't time for all that. A pearl before swine. What's up, anyway? You are in a funny mood. It's the last night, I suppose. It doesn't have to be. If the up is there for next season, you don't have to turn it down. Twenty-three years we've been ugly sisters. I don't want it to stop. It's me who should be in a funny mood. It's all got to change, Joe. It's all got to change. What? Has, what do you mean? I'll change anything. I didn't mean that. I'm sorry. It's just me. I know how you must be feeling with your mother and dear. Hi, Doug. Oz. We'll talk about it later, Joe. Go for it, Petra. Thanks, Bob. It'll be different come next November. You're burning boats, Billy. Burning boats when there's no need. James, still no word on Karen? I'm sorry. Well, where is she? It'll be this the last one, Billy. Let's make it a good one. What's she doing? I'm sure she'll be all right. Don't you think, Billy? What? The show must go on, and you never left far from a phone box. That's what I think. Just for a bit, you mean I could be dancing and giving it to God? Then I'd really know what the people thought about. She could have come at me. A bottle of black stuck in a gob and half a pound of coke up and all is the only accident she'll have. Mr. Barford, Mr. James, you're cold. No, 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 to hear that. Baron Hard. Uh, what do you think you're doing? Oh. Now come along, girls, and introduce yourselves to the prince nicely. Hello, I'm Dyspepsia, but you can call me Dippy. Hello, I'm Amphibia, and you can call me any time. <laughs> I beg your pardon. Right, what's, what's she done? We can't tell you how much we're looking forward to the ball tonight, Your Majesty. Oh. As a matter of fact, my daughters wondered if you might be wanting a little entertainment this evening. Entertainment? Why, yes. This one here, Dyspepsia, sings like a bird. Yes, an ostrich. <laughs> and other one, that one there, Amphibia can dance like a movie star. Like King Kong. Husband or not, I'll cook you in a minute. Oh, honey, honey. So this nice young prince, how you dance, Amphibia. Oh, no, please, uh, oh, well. I'll uh, say this much. If her plastic surgeon's out there, she's... Excuse me. She's getting her own back. Out of the way, duck feet. It's time to show them some real talent. Thank you. Now I'd like to sing you a little song that's going to haunt you for the rest of your lives. Me, 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 me. Oh, she's going to... Oh, she's going to... Murder it. Shut your grip. Well, can I did. If you sing like that, they'll put you up against the wall and throw a custard pie at you. And if you dance like that, they'll put you against the custard pie and throw a wall at you. Girls, girls, ladies and gentlemen, and garbage, one fine day from Madam Buttercup Fly. Where? Ah, gotcha. Music. Vestro, please. Mm. One fine day will know a heart of blue crying over the extreme. Professionalism. Anyway, I did. 
But all I could think of was Bankside Woods. Bankside Woods. The muddy ground. It had been raining just as it had all through Christmas. It was twenty to eight. Sniffing, searching. By God, if ever they sniffed, they'd be sniffing that night. I've seen her somewhere. I know I have. Doesn't sound your type, Johnson. Caterpillar boots. Sniffing. My pigs after truffles. Who's on forensic, Sergeant? But I couldn't tell. Matheson, sir. All I could do was carry on singing. Get him over, will you? Mm. This rain doesn't help. Here he is, sir. Ah, Madison. Oh, did you have a good Christmas, Andrew? Oh, working, busy. Wife had the flu. Oh. But Hogmanay wasn't too bad. And yourself? Oh, very quiet. Just thinking how lucky to have got so far into the new year without being called out. <laughs> so, uh, what can you tell us? Well, not much at the moment, apart from the obvious. It's the body of a young woman, late teens, early twenties. She's been dead for approximately six hours. Mm -hmm. Can't be precise, of course, but uh, she must have died around one o'clock. I won't be able to give you the true cause of death till we get her back to the lab, but it appears that death was caused by strangulation after being knocked unconscious by a blow to the back of the head. Any sexual assault? Well, clothing disturbed, but that seems about all. Well, I'd better have a look at her then, eh? Before you uh, move on. Who found her? A couple of kids on the way home from school, sir. They use the woods as a shortcut to the bankside estate. Yeah, among other things. What's that? Oh, the place is littered with syringes. Ah. I gather there's no identification. No, sir. What about personal effects? About 80 pounds, a comb, packet of cigarettes, matches, and uh, a brooch, sir. Found alongside the body. Well, here she is. Oh, uh, one odd thing. Leaves have been piled over her face, but uh, no attempt had been made to hide the body. You said she'd been struck on the head. Yes, uh, on the back of the head. So, before they strangled her, whoever it was must have turned the body over. She'd have been lying face downwards. Oh, oh my so. God! Sir! What is it, Sergeant? I've remembered. I know who she is. Viv and me took the kids to the panto on Wednesday. So? Well, that's why I saw her, sir. It's Cinderella. I don't know her real name, but it's Cinderella. Are you sure? Yes, sir. Well, if you're right, it gives the lie to all that happily ever after nonsense. It's the last night tonight. We, we really wanted to go next Tuesday, Philippa's birthday, but it ends tonight, so we went, well, this Wednesday. Has the photographer finished? Just. I can't believe it. Well, it's time to start. Grab the Polaroids and bring her belongings over to the car as soon as you can. Let's get out of this god-awful rain. Yes, sir. Uh, see you later, Madison. Happy New Year. Yeah, and to you. <laughs> oh, I've had no proper understudy rehearsal. You were very good. Any news, Gwen? No. No. We'll let you know as soon as we hear anything. Right. Come here, Sandra. Let me help you off. But... Where oh. is she? Good grief. She thinks she's all right. The last time anybody will wear that. I'll be fine, except for the waltz and waters. That is ballet. I can get by with the rest, but that's ballet. And what about Wally on the book? Disaster, dear. You'll be sorry if James on panic. You're only a pair. It just walked about. Uh, They'll not notice. Billy saw Karen this afternoon at the station. She was all right then. At the station? But not tell us. He knows already. What was she doing there? Probably catching a train. Kitchen next. Come on, Petra. Arms up. I'd be so upset if she was. Oh, you've got to be joking. Karen must be a size 10. Well, I'll never get into that. Yes, you will. I'm a 14. You'll never do it enough. We're not talking tips and pennies. Just make sure you keep your front out front. That won't hold. You'd think she'd have run. Thank you, Tina. Well, it won't. Cinderella and Bob. Oh. Stand by. Cinderella. I'm not ready. Still, breathe in. If you're not ready, they'll have to wait. <laughs> There. Shoot. Bro. Thanks. Karen, please. Oh, I, I, I mean, Petra, please. Oh, Petra. Listen to him. Cinderella. It. Disaster. Do I look all right? How that man got to be company manager. Mm. Just don't turn your back on the audience. Right. I'm off. Poor boy, you carry on. Okay. Eighty pounds and thirty-five pence. 
Well, robbery wasn't the motive. Let's have a look at this brooch. Uh, what do you make of that? Looks expensive, sir. A gold mouse with ruby eyes. Perhaps it was a Christmas present. Not a very appropriate one. She's wearing no other jewellery except for an ear stub, not the sort of girl again for this kind of thing. Perhaps it wasn't hers. That's funny. Sir? Is this how it was when it was found? Well, nobody's touched it. Not at all. Oh, just to put it in the bag, sir. Give me the photos. Let's see exactly where it was placed in relationship to the body. Here we are, sir. It was by her left shoulder. You can see it. There. You couldn't miss it, could you? It must have come off in the struggle, perhaps. I don't think so. If you were observant, you would notice the clasp is fastened. Ah. Yes, the eye button. The actor playing Cinderella is Karen White, sir. We've checked with the theatre. It seems she didn't turn up for the show tonight. Our understudy's on. Right. Let's go to the panto, shall we? I empathise with Cinderella. My father, he with the mark of Satan, died when I was twelve. Pneumosilicosis, they said, caused by coal dust from the pit. It was just me and ma'am after that. From twelve to fifty, it was the closest bonding you'll ever know. Closer than a newborn baby and its ma'am. The night after he died, she made me sit up in the parlour with her. The coffin before us, the lid off. It was all black and candles. The curtains drawn. Just the white satin and his face with its mark of Satan showing up even more against the pallor of his skin. She spoke out loud. She had no fear. But me, I barely whispered. It's just you and me now, Billy. I'll look after you, ma'am. You won't leave me, will you? No. I only want to be with you. And what shall I do when you get married? I shan't leave you. Promise me. Will you promise me, Billy? I promise, ma'am. The next day before the coffins closed for the last time, she made me kiss him. Go on, Billy, before the others come. They'll be here in a minute. It shows your respect. It shows that you're loving. Hurry up. And I kissed his forehead. Pressed my mouth to the mark. It was like a secret pact. Something we shared. Just him and me. For after all, my mother was something else. She was an angel. Now put the lid on. I don't want anyone else to see him. They'll do it. No, Billy. Don't it when they come? We'll do it. But... All right. I felt... I still feel... as though it was me who shut him out of this world. I'd cut off the light... Cut off his parlour with the chintz wallpaper that he'd hung. The uncooked maquette chairs that he'd bought cheap and that Mother never really liked. And the paper up to the dado that he'd painstakingly stained and then figured with a comb to produce the swirling patterned grain of dark oak. Feathering, he called it. And the rag rug made from strips of old clothes in front of the brass fender. Within a year it had all gone. Not a trace was left. She wanted rid of it because she didn't like it. And I went along with her because I wanted to sit in the parlour without seeing the shadow of the coffin lid passing across his face. Everything became hers and mine. On my fourteenth birthday, she told me that she didn't want me to call her mum anymore. It was childish. I was to call her Rose, not Rosie. That's what he'd called her. Just rose. I have done ever since. Oh, oh, my head. I won't 
touch a drop, not one, not ever again. Poor father. Oh, I don't deserve you, Cinders. I'm a selfish old man, and I'm glad you're not going to the ball. Because if the prince took just one look at you, he'd fall in love with you straight away. I know he would. And then he'd take you off, and then... And then I'd never see you again. I'd be with the Baroness and those two heartless stepsisters of yours. Oh, I wouldn't leave you, Father. Oh, wouldn't you, child? Never. If the prince chose to marry me, I should make him command you to live in the palace with us. Times are hard for us now. But if you'll forgive me for what I've brought us to and promise me one more chance to make amends, that, that's all I want. Of course I will, Father. I'll not drink another drop. And I'll make everything up to you one day. Wait and see. Forgive me, Sinjas. It's the way life is, you see. It's the way life is. Things may not come out the way you plan. One more chance is due to every man. One more chance that is, it's not too late. We'll be living on some grand stage yet, you'll see. An automobile to fancy. Yes, sir, man. A coat made of seal skin is what my girl will wear. Your skin isn't good enough. I'm in isn't good enough. I can't put a diamond on good enough. To show you what you're worth, there's not enough to do. There's nothing on this earth good enough for you. I'll have to do my shopping upstairs. In the room, I'll buy you a star, not just a star, but the best one in the sky. You'll have a cloud to dream on, a cloud as light as an angel's sky. I'll buy you a from the ring of a star-filled afternoon. Oh, I'll not rest, my darling. No, I'll not rest until I buy the moon. Oh, I'll buy you a star. Rose never got me the moon. We never had a brand new estate. Just his home turned into a boarding house. His parlor became the dining room. I slept in the living room by the fire and Rose had the box room. And the other three bedrooms became holiday lets or rooms for sales reps on one night stopovers. <laughs> Off you go, Cinders, before they find you. Cinderella! She is not here. <laughs> Bloody idiot. Uh, I'm not a theatre goer myself. Never seen Cinderella. Huh? But I saw Aladdin once at the York Empire. Old Mother Riley and her daughter, Kitty McShane. The money girl. He played Widow Twanky. She played Aladdin. Shall I park in the street, sir? Why? Use the theatre car park. We might as well get as near as we can. It's an unmarked car. Yes, sir. It, it looks full, though. There's a place over there by those steps. Oh, oh, right. They hated each other by all accounts. Married, they were. Her and Arthur Lucan. Yes. I couldn't be doing with all that cross-dressing. 
Worried me. Yes, sir. Probably worried Kitty also. Are we all right here, sir? It says no parking. A polite sign only, Sergeant. You're a member of Her Majesty's police force. You can park where you like. The rain's easing off. It would have worried me had I been Kitty. Panto tradition, sir. Never you're right. My father planted this rose tree ten years ago, on my mother's grave. Every day without ceasing I've cared for it. But see, today the flowers are wilted, dying, no matter how much I care for them. Oh, I wish my mother were here to help me. I'm so unhappy. <laughs> May I rest here with you, child? I'm so hungry and so thirsty. I always thought that the fairy godmother was Cinderella's still, small voice. The voice that my father told me about when I was a boy. The still, small voice of Bible stories of Elijah. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake, and after the earthquake a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire a still small voice. The flowers are dead. Sometimes I hear a still small voice. What is your name? Cinderella. Thank you, Cinderella. You have been very kind, and you will be rewarded. Oh, I don't want to be rewarded. I'm just happy to... Billy, can I have a quick word? Oh, well, I... Uh, please, don't take long. Somewhere quiet, the scene, Doc. You're not on for a bit, are you? Twenty-five minutes. Please, I'm on in five anyway. It's Karen, Billy. Gwen said you saw her in the high street. I did, at the railway station. That's right, we're well outside it. Well, what time was it? About two o'clock. Was she going in or what? Well, just, just standing outside. I didn't see her till I nearly fell over. I've been to the bank, you know, get a bit out and put enough in to cover the January mortgage repayment so you can imagine what state I was in, Mavis. Since Mother died, I do all the bills like that, everything on direct debit. I can't did she say me. anything? Yes, she, she said hello. Hello, she said. I said hello. Twice in one day, people will start talking if we carry on like this. I told her she looked very pretty. And, and she did, considering. Considering what? Well, you know, the boots and everything. I mean, if that's what you like. <laughs> oh, yeah, I think yeah, well, we all know you do. No, what I mean is that she, you could see she'd made an effort. She was dressed up? In a way. Was she carrying a case? No. So she didn't look as though she was about to catch a train. But I couldn't tell that, could I? As I said, I mean, she was just standing there. Oh, we're travelling back to town to get her tomorrow. She was going to move into my place. She said she'd come back to Sydney with me in the summer. I can't believe her. And she wouldn't have been catching a train. Besides, she had no money. What was she doing at the station? What was she doing, Billy? I don't know. I know most of the company don't think much over her. All me come to that. Joe especially. But I don't care what they think. I really love her, Billy. It was in a bad way when we started rehearsals in all sorts, you know, drugs. Well, crack. But all that's changed, honestly, Billy. Oh, I can't think straight. I want to be out there looking for her. I think someone ought to call the police. I should leave it, Oz, if I were you. Till after the show, anyway. <laughs> You think they've had the interval? It's half eight, so it must be coming up. Well, we'll see Cinderella set off for the ball, and then we'll go backstage. Come on, Sergeant, lead the way. We'll slip into the back of the stalls and second childhood. I don't think much of the security. There's quite a while to go yet, sir, before the transformation. We'll sit over there then. You're too good for your own good, Cinders. That's what you are. Look, Buttons, look. The rosebush. Mother's rosebush. 
It's alive again. See the leaves and buds. It's flowering. The buds are opening. Dear Button, the old lady was right. Everything will work out in the end. You'll see. Sir, the wanderer returns. Where have you been? Off the bounty the word. Oh. Right. I suppose he's droning on about Karen. Everything will work out in the end. Mm. But most of us don't have fairy godmothers to give things a push. Here, this is for you. What? A letter. For me? It's got your name on it. What is it from? I've no idea. It was put on my dressing table by mistake. I've just been clearing away my makeup. When? Must have been during the kitchen scene. Everything all right? Yes. What's the matter? What's wrong? Nothing. Nothing's wrong. It's a program. It's, it's just a program. Who is? Bournemouth. Bournemouth? Let's see. There's no message with it. What did you do that for? I only wanted to have a look. Yes, but well, you're too late. <laughs> that takes us back, eh? Ninety-one? No, no, ninety. You went solo, 91. Westcliff was 90. 91, Widow 20. Oh, yes, you're right. <laughs> Stam, I joined the craft club. I can't remember a flipping thing. What did you think, honestly? I meant what I said, Joe. I wasn't very good, was I? Yes, you were. I'm not a stand-up. I need someone to play off. This is the last ugly sister. Don't make your mind up now. Think about it again. The interval. I'm going for a fag. What is the matter, my child? Why are you crying? Holly, somebody's parked across the entrance to the stage door. Uh, don't bother me now, Jane. Right up against the steps. It's not illegal. They can't get the ponies in. What do you mean they can't get the ponies in? They can't get the ponies through the stage door. Oh, no. Uh, well, they'll have to bring them in another way. But there is no other way except to respond to Pout. Oh, no. Whose car is it? Oh, I don't know. Oh, no. Why did he please stop saying, oh, no? Yes, do. But can't they bounce it back? How long before the transformation scene? About four minutes. Oh, no. We'll have to stop the show. My blood pressure must be had a little the other night. Take over the book. What? Oh, never mind all that. There aren't enough fairies in fairyland anyway. One less won't make any difference. But Wally! Oh, get off my book. Where's Ark? Two fine fat rats and a little magic. Oh. Oh. Who's done this to me? Oh, God, no brain. We'll never bounce it back, Art. And what's the stage doorman doing? He's supposed to watch for the sort of thing. What about the ponies? What about the ponies? Oh, we'll just have to bring them through the front of the house. Front of house? You can't bring them facing through the front of house. Where's the magic? Through the audience. Where's the bloody magic of that? Oh, no. A nightmare. A bloody nightmare. I'll have to make an announcement. Well, you've only got a few minutes. This will kill me. Have you seen the wonderful Boston Waters, Wally? The Gwyn. The precious garden. It's like six little boys lying on the backs, piddling in the hay. Oh, never mind all that. Uh, James, when the pair is come off, put the tunnel through the front of us. The audience will hear you. I want them to hear it. What's up? I've got an announcement to make. And call Joe on stage. What's up? I never mind what's up. Call it. Calling Mr. Jennings. Calling Mr. Jennings. Uh, it's no good. Would Mr. Oh. Jennings come to the prompt corner? It is urgent. It's no Would Mr. Jennings please come to the prompt corner immediately? It's urgent. It's not on to that too. While you'll be on the fire escape after the fire. Oh, no. Oh, get him up here. Get him up here. I'm on the book. I'll take the book. No. I said. I'm sick of being messed around. How are you? Yes. I'm either a fairy or I'm running the prop corner. Now, which is it, Wally? Which is it? Oh, don't you stop. I'll get it. Don't I'll pee myself if I stay here any longer. Calling Karen. I'm oh, sorry. I mean Petra. This is your call for the transformation scene. If there's going to be one. I'm absolutely 
lovely, fed up, and this is your one and only call. Make someone happy, don't be It doesn't matter whether it fits or whether it doesn't fit, Joe. Sing it. We'll cut it from the second half. But what shall I say? I don't know. You're the actor. Do it, turn. You can stand in your head for all I care. Just give us five minutes for I... Go on, you'll be fine, Joe. Oh, my God, You'll be fine, I promise. Just get in the coat, Petra. Get in the coat. And your back's all done. When? Oh, shut up. Oh, I shall have a stroke. When? When? I know it. I shall have a stroke. The fairy's coming up now, Molly. Yay! Right. Uh, hold the transformation scene. Bring in the village backlog and put this over to the auditorium. This is a police message with the owner of a dark blue Ford Cochina. Registration number L495 GUC. Please go round to the car park and move their vehicle as it is causing obstruction. That is a dark blue Ford Cochina. Registration number L495 GUC. Sergeant. Yes, sir. That's us. <laughs> no, honestly, it gets worse. You know, if this was a ladder and I was willing to hang here, rub me lamp. <laughs> My friend, Big Brenda, was going to be in this, you know. Better out of it, I say. She was really looking forward to the ball scene. Yes, she likes the balls, does Brenda. <laughs> What are you laughing at? Ooh, do you know the muck you get in? <laughs> oh no, he's gone daft. What's this got to do with Cinderella? Just let him be, boy. He'll be all right. Go and see the horse. She'll be no use at all. It starts here and goes right down to it. <laughs> too many takeaways, that's what I think. <laughs> well, I said, I said, Brenda, dear, dance. Dance? You couldn't do a slow, slow, let alone a quick, quick. <laughs> <laughs> Not with your trouble. So she's given her Mrs. Whittington in Stockport. Well, I, I mean, a, a second best friend's in it, you know. Giving his dick. <laughs> oh, he's a big lad, in dick. He's got muscled out here. Ooh, she'll love it, she will. You know, she won't know whether to lick him or use him as a baseball bat. <laughs> Here we are right there, I said. <laughs> What are you doing parking the car here? Can't you see the notice? It's like a view we didn't call the police. Sergeant. G.I. Andrew Clifford and V.S. Peter Johnson. Mr. Um, we are the police. Oh, no. And we'd like to have a word with you. It's about Miss Karen White. What's she done? Uh, where is she? Oh, we can't go to that right now, sir. But as I say, if we could just have a few words. Well, we're coming out to the interval. I can see you after that. Please, please, move your car. It's the horses, you see. It's the horses. Listen, listen, listen. Oh, I do miss her, though. Always happy. Dear Brenda. Always a smile. You do with her right now, the way things are. Poor Cinders. Did you see her? Cheering up, that's what she needs. Let's face it, that's what we all need. You look as though you could do with a pumpkin, dear. <laughs> yes, by the looks of things, you could do it too. <laughs> Gotta put a smile on your face, Miss Linda. <laughs> never mind. Never mind. Life's never as bad as it seems. That's what I found. You know the answer, don't you, love? Yes, yeah, she's sitting next to you. <laughs> I'll tell you what my friend Brenda would say. The sound of applause is delicious. It's a thrill to have the world at your feet. The praise of the crowd is exciting. But I've learned that's not what makes life complete. There's one thing you can do 
for the rest of your day. It's worth all the time. It's pretty bad. You will be Maybe someone will help you. Make just one someone happy. Make just one of the heart. Everything sorted, Wally. Oh, don't ask. You're wet through. It's raining. Uh, Jane, make sure everybody knows this number's gone for actual. Oh, no. Oh, I can't keep going. It's a bad old time to see you. Where's the real hell of life? Love is the answer. Someone to love is the answer. One you found him. Build your world around him. Make someone happy. Make just one somebody happy. And you will be happy. God bless you. Will you keep those bloody horses quiet? <laughs> oh, there you are. It's cooler out here. Got to have a fag. That was smashing, Joe. <laughs> Might as well as in the fire escape, eh, maybe? Really good. You heard it then? Well, of course I did. It was a bang on form. You really thought I got by? Got by? I told you, bang on. I was damn nervous, I can tell you. Well, you didn't look it. Proud of you, sis. The sweat was pouring. It didn't show. Wasn't too blue with the best bat show, was it? Oh, the kids wouldn't understand it, and the grown ups would love it. You're very good at all that, you know, improvising. Oh, you were really very good. You know you were. You'll make a great game, Joe. I see. It's very twanky for me from now on, then. Oh, Mother Goose. Christmas won't be the same. That's for sure. Hmm. Why, Billy? Well, I'm getting on, aren't I? Come on. I've got to start getting my life together. Hold on, Mavis. She'll be talking pensions next. No one liners, Joe. I'm being serious. Go on, then. Be serious. All this helping with the digs through the year and six weeks of panto. I don't know what I'm doing. Panto was to please the audience. The rest of the year was to please her. It's the same for me. No, you see, it's not. It's different. You're married, you've got children, and you don't stop acting come January. For bits of real theatre work, odd days filming, voiceovers... It was all right when Rose was alive. She was my real focus for as long as I can remember. Well, she's dead. Now I've got to start living to please myself. And besides, the ugly sister I wanted to be was not what I am. Not your Les Dawson or your Arthur Lucan. It was your Danny LaRue. I wanted to look a million dollars, always. Fabulous gowns, putting on a face... Cars, oh, folly, I don't look that. Beauty might be only skin deep, but it's what folks see. And I want them to see a chaise long, not a busted sofa. They love you, Billy. Yes, well, I don't. And it's not what I want. If you carry on, you'll be fine. Prove that tonight. You don't need me. It's me who's dragged you into the third raters. I've only ever been Wakefield amateur. Dancing lessons with Queenie Green, elocution with Miss Robinson. You could do Blackpool, Brighton, the Palladium again. Again? That's just the programme knows. You're a proper actor. I was only in the court. Well, that was then. Change your mind, Billy. I can't. There's no such word. Yes, there is, Amphibia. There's no such word. Oh, yes, there is. Oh, no, there isn't. Cut it, Joe. You were right, you see. What you said earlier. I've burnt my boats. There's no going back. This is the end. My last ugly sister. 
I've always had the knack of being able to make people feel sorry for me. To make people like me. I used Rose's death mercilessly over Christmas. Poor old Billy, they all thought. <laughs> Poor old them, thought I. If only they knew. How have you burnt your boat, Billy? Oh, I better go in. Heavens are about to open. Right, I'll, uh, I'll just finish this. You know, there is nothing less glamorous than an ugly sister with wet feathers. <laughs> Billy, all you have to do is let Wally know that you've... In the end, everyone had a good time and Cinder did go to the ball. Weller understood he did anyway. Joe was right about one thing. Christmases would never be the same again. Once Dad had died, Rose stopped being quite such a quake. Plain living went out of the window. You couldn't see the fish for the parsley. It was all out with the holly, up with the tree, and sherry for all the borders. It was always a great disappointment to her that I never spent Christmas at home. Christmas is a time when families should be together. I know that. After those currents. Well, why aren't you here, then? If it was once, just once. She always made two cakes. One for the lodgers and a small one for me to take away. There are not many sons are still at home at my age, Rose. You're lucky to see as much of me as you do. What's that supposed to mean? Well, just what it says. Most sons are married with their own family by the time they're your age. Is that what you're getting at? Oh, something of the kind. Oh, I said goodbye to that. Pass me the cake, Jim. Yes, the days are long past and back. I used to be a grandmother. Let alone a great-grandmother, which I could be by now. You've no gumption. I thought you were gay for years. Or even a transvestite. At least that would have been something to talk about in private. But you like this cake mixture, a great mind of sloppy cake mixture. Make a great cake, Rose. A bowl of batter. And don't be funny. You're not gay. You're not married. What do you do, Billy? What do you do? I stay here. Year in and year out. That's not what I mean. Looking after you and this bloody boarding house. Taking bookings, cooking breakfasts, making the beds, cleaning the loos, shoving food in one end and clearing up when it comes out the other. Except for six weeks at Christmas when I do what I want. Don't be dirty, Billy. And move out the way, please. I want to get to the oven. Now that's just mark one for five and a half hours. Yours has got to go in in two hours' time. Twenty to five. Remind me. You still haven't answered my question. What do you do, Billy? Why haven't you got a woman? Because I've never had a girlfriend yet who you haven't criticised. I was just doing what you wanted. Because you're only capable of halfway weak relationships. You only commit yourself halfway across the road and full commitment, I know it. And you rely on me to give you the excuse for clearing off. So don't blame me for the way your life's turned out. I give you nothing but encouragement. I say only what you want to hear. Oh, oh, Always yes. have. And don't, oh yes, me. There's nothing I don't know about you. Nothing. I wanted to tell her that she didn't know the half of it. But I couldn't, because then she wouldn't have wanted me at all, never mind Christmas. And she was all I had. And I mean, I was all she had, however much she moaned, however much we argued. And finally, Brig. The unknown girl at Bournemouth. Mrs. Dawn Hughes in Balsall Heath, who I allowed to live. Or any of those who have given me contentment. Above all, Cinderella. I want a quick get out once we're down. Oh, yes. You're, uh, you're driving back to Swansea tonight, then? As uh, soon as we loaded the vans. Oh, I can't wait to get home. Get my dogs out the kennels tomorrow. <laughs> uh, can I, then, collect the costume? Oh, yes, yes. Help yourself. You you know where they are. On the floor, usually. <laughs> now, I've had a word with Joe. He says I can take it. Oh, good. He's organising some drinks for after the show in here. You know, company do. 
You'll be able to come, won't you? <laughs> it's like keeping me out. Oh, can't stay long, my... Oh, dear me, that needs a wash. Did you laugh, Dougie, sister, tonight, sir? So a little bird told me. Yes. Oh, Joe will miss you. Well, I expect you'll miss Joe. I will. Look, uh, I haven't said anything before, because they uh, didn't want to seem intrusive, but I was sorry to hear about your mother. Oh, thank you. When exactly did it happen, darling? The week before we started rehearsal. Oh, must have been a shock. Well, no, not exactly. I mean, I, I've been expecting it for some time. Uh, a heart, was it? No, it wasn't a heart. Well, not really. Oh? Anyway, I am sorry. It's always a shock when it happens. My head had been ill for over 18 months. Still came as a shock, though. I haven't got over it yet. Don't think I ever will. Well, I, I expect you'll have your hands full with the boarding house now, then. Oh, something like that. A, a friend's looking after it while I'm here. Do you know, I was thinking only the other night. Last time we worked together at Westcliff, I met her then after the first night. I just lost Eddie. She was very kind to me. Now, we all went for a meal, do you remember? Very well. And she said how close you were. That whenever you did panto, you carried something of hers, as though she was always with her. Yes, always. Even this year. In memoriam, as you might say. Oh? Yes. Most of these costumes should be flung. Still, better get a back to Maurice Angels. Leave them to decide what's what. The brooch. Hmm? Uh, a gold mouse with ruby eyes. My father gave it to her. It was a birthday present. The last he bought her before he died. Oh, Billy. Calling wardrobe. Would Gwen please come to the prompt corner? Oh, that's me then. Must be end of our swim. It's on my other costume. Ready for the walk down. Well, perhaps I could see it later. Yes. Well, I have to go, love. Bye for now. Burning bridges. Burning bridges. Curtain down, Act One, ladies and gentlemen. Curtain down, Act One. The police? Are you sure? Oz was there. Oh, my God. Shut up, you silly cow. I'll tell you something. I wish I had as many good-looking policemen taking an interest in me. Mm -hmm. Oh, chance would be a fine thing. Get me roots done, cover up the grey. If they don't take me into custody and batter the truth out of me, <laughs> wah, I'm not Tina Town then. Who is this whore? Oh, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> gossip, gossip. Mm. End of season. What do you think's happened then? Mm. Where is she, though? I mean, they must be here because of her. She was all right last night after the show. We had a Chinese. Where did you go? The Lotus House. Who were you with? Not the electrician. He was wonderful. Oh. You tried hard enough. Not as hard as Joe. Oh, we went back to his place. You didn't. Wonderful. Joe oh, will be furious. Why? <laughs> Oh, Joe Jennings. Where did he go? Oh, am I a virgin? I had no idea. I knew him 20 odd years ago. He didn't come out of the closet till he got married. And then only for the farm show season. <laughs> You've got two children. Oh, three. Three? So? A boy and two girls. His wife was here at the first night. Uh, Carol? Mm. Hey, I was with him three years ago. He had a caravan then. He used to park it in any old car park, go out after the show, pick up some chap and take him back. <laughs> Don't think he does much, mind you. No, but I mean, can you imagine? Oh. And his wife doesn't know. I don't think she cares. Oh, I couldn't live like that. She comes to every first night. Joe goes home for Christmas Day, and that's it. No wonder he hates last night. <laughs> I always thought he had a thing about Billy. Oh, well, I can imagine that. So can I. He is lovely. Mind you, I can't stand married gays. I know what you mean. Mm. I like gays. It's just the married ones. Sisters. Sisters, there were never such devoted sisters. Well, this one's going, Joe. Many men have tried to split us up. Oh, but no one can. Nobody can. Oh, no. 
We haven't done that for ages. No other stripper come to think of it. Yeah, I used to love doing that. Union Jack Knickers. <laughs> oh, God. I wonder who put that programme there. It was Westcliff the last time we sang Sisters. The year before Bournemouth. Was it? Oh, yeah. I met Rose for the first time. She came on a day trip. Do you remember? Not really. But of course I did. That was the start of it all. She went to the theatre. Something was on her mind and it wasn't Cinderella. I've no idea. We had a fish and chip tea and then before the show we went for a walk along the seafront. It was then that she told me. George Ox is back again this Christmas. I have no idea who she was talking about. Who? Oh? George Oxley. Oh. I hadn't a clue. He came last week. I, I don't know who you're on about. You've heard me talk of George. I don't think so. I... George and Hilda. I've told you about them. He's big in balls. He plays darts. From Weymouth. I don't remember. Have I met him? They've been staying for years. Him and Elder used to come every year the day after Boxing Day and stay over the New Year. They'd spent their honeymoon in Scarborough. Once the children grew up, they started coming back every year. Sort of second honeymoon. Well, tenth in the end. Well, that's why you never met him. But I told you about them. They always stayed with me, and I always kept the same room free for them. They didn't have much money. But they did see life, eh? Yes, <laughs> in a small way. But, well, anyway, last year he booked the room, same as usual. But when he came, he was by himself and unhappy. So unhappy. She passed away, Hilda. Oh? Cancer. Started in her left chair. Yes. It's the companionship, Billy. He wants to marry you. I said it after ask you. And that's why I'm here. <laughs> I can't let you out of my sight for a minute, can I? You don't have to ask me. I wanted to. I want your blessing. Else I say no. It's only been me and you for nearly 40 years. It'll give you a chance to find someone. You need looking after. And I won't always be here. Oh, I'll manage. I won't be getting married. I'm too set in my ways. Our ways. I didn't think I would again. Then I have your blessing, do I? Of course. He's a good man. Let me go, Billy. I've not just said. That wasn't from your heart. That's as near as I can get. Well, then. I can't expect more. I'll let you go. But where do I go, Rose? Whenever I looked at a girl, I saw her through Rose's eyes. And though she denied it, Rose hated all my girls. We used to laugh about my rose-coloured spectacles. She would say, don't forget your spectacles, Billy, and you'll be all right. How could I? They were part of me. That night in Bournemouth, after the show, I walked along the promenade, and I saw a girl through Rose's eyes. I tried to cast away the spectacles just as Rose was casting me away, but I couldn't. We went into a shelter. I tried to be myself. That was the first time I hurt anyone. But I didn't kill her. Rose got her wish and I stayed home. Boom, boom, boom. 
while Joe went solo as Widow Twanky in the West. And that's how I acquired one stepfather and two of course, it's fun to wear a red paper hat. Of course, it's good to know the wine isn't flat. But though you take a certain comfort from that, you then have me the life of the party. Of course, it's nice to see the streamers are strong. To know the guest list is appealingly young. But if you want the dough to really be wrong, you better have me the life of the party. Oh, no, you wouldn't stop the night to be a bar. You have the feeling constantly of the bar. So I don't have the guarantee. The party. I'm sorry to, uh, well, uh, to have to tell you like this. Yes. Are you all right, Mr. Wallace? Uh, I'm sorry. Can I get you anything? Uh, I don't know what to say. She was only a kid. There aren't words, are there? So, uh, what do you want me to do now? Stop the show, I suppose. Oh, that won't be necessary. What is it, another hour? About uh, 50 minutes. Well, then. I think we should keep it to ourselves until the curtain's down. But I want no one to leave the theatre without my permission. But they know you're here. Ah, but they don't know why. Let's keep it that way. Yes. Come on. Come on. First the ponies. And this. I've got to have a drink. I'm not supposed to. Uh, help, you know. Will you join me? Uh, no, I won't, thank you. I've been in this business for years. If at some point uh, you could let me have names and addresses of the full company, it would help. Yes, sir. Whatever you like. And uh, uh, there's one other thing. Sometime later in the show, I wanted to put out a backstage announcement for me over the tannoy. Oh, what? Yeah, I'll write it down. And I want no big deal, just an ordinary run of the mill announcement. The fun, the fun begins. It's all different now. Look where we've ended up. There's that fairy godmother having the bloody electrician. Cinderella's on crack, wherever she is. It's the woman not doing the palace walk down to the neighbour's thing. I'll be glad to see the back of him. Oz is all right, Joe. Don't be so judgmental. Oh, you've changed the tune. No, I haven't. Anyway, you can have to get these drinks out. Uh, there's some nuts and crisps in that carrier bag and, and uh, a few bits of marks and sparks. Uh, I've got those stuffed vine leaves that you like. But there's only one packet, so uh, put them out of the way. He said they were in love. Not you, Karen. <laughs> well, we certainly were made for each other. I'd love to know where they got the crack money from. I don't turn it up to keep me in cigarettes. I wish you wouldn't keep making a joke of everything. That's the second time tonight you said that. I could take offence, but you won't. I said they were off the drugs anyway. Who did they say that to? Well, me. He might be. She isn't. I saw her on Monday night buying some. Where? Bankside. Bankside? You know, that big council estate. Far end of the Copthorne Road. And what were you doing there? There's a park I like to go to. <laughs> some woods. Oh. No, it's not what you think either. Well, no, it's dead. It's full of old men. You ought to be careful. I am. Uh, there's some uh, of your mother's Christmas cake left. Shall I put it out? Now, why not? She died at home then, did she? Yes. Only last year you said she was spending more time in Weymouth. Well, she was, but she'd never leave me. We always said. He was right, though. Rose spent most of the two months before Christmas in Weymouth. 
She didn't come up to Scarborough until two days before I was due to start rehearsal. She told me she was going back to live with George permanently. You see, Billy, they're my family now. I must be where they want to be. But you live here. No, I shall be living in Weymouth, in George's house, with him and the girls. He said you'd both be living here. He didn't want to upset you. Well, he has done. Then I'm sorry. But you didn't exactly make him welcome. I'm very happy with them. And they've really made me feel I belong. Well, why shouldn't I go and live in Weymouth? Fifty odd years I've looked after you. Why shouldn't I want a little happiness of my own? When George asked me to marry him, I saw a chance to live for myself again, and I took it. I need that. To be able to rely on someone. To have a shoulder. I don't want to be hurtful, Billy. But you were never that. All you care about is yourself and your blessed panto. Your dad wasn't all he was cracked up to be, you know. The Wakefield Quakers were to him what panto is to you. An escape. An excuse. I never really came into it. George is a truly good man. And I'm happier in Weymouth than I've ever been. Why can't you break free? If, if that's how you feel, why did you come here at all? Well, this is it, isn't it? You see... What? There's no easy way to tell you, so I'll just say it. I've come up here to sell the house. To sell... What about me? You'll have to find somewhere else to live. I've told you you can come and live with us in Weymouth. You'll be made very welcome. No. Well, it's up to you. I'm sorry, but that's the way I want it. You've no guests booked in while you're away, have you? Well, have you? No, Rosa. Then this is as good a time as any. I shan't be taking any of the furniture. So pick out whatever you want and I'll have it put in store. You might not sell it. How did she die, Billy? Oh, I will. I'm not that bothered about the price. What? I, I was just thinking, Rose. What did she die of? A broken heart. How? Oh. I don't want to talk about it. Well, what is it, Billy? Why can't you tell me? What's happened? I've never known you like this. You've always told me everything. At Christmas, during Panto, what happens at other times doesn't matter. So I'm not supposed to care at other times? Only at Christmas. But this is the last one. Yes. Well, then, it's different. I can't help it. I do worry about you. Who's looking after the body now? My stepsisters. Gwen said you told her it was a friend. That you got somebody in. Well, whatever, it doesn't matter. Well, which is it? What does it matter? And when you get back, will you be able to run it by yourself? Look, I've told you my few questions. I don't go on about what you were doing at Bankside, do I? Or what your Carol thinks the rest of the year? I don't ask you what you do about cottaging when you're back at home. Oh, for God's sake. Calling wardrobe. Would Gwen please come to the prompt corner? What? With some safety things. I hadn't made George welcome. I hated him. The more dreadful real life became during the two years he lived with us in Scarborough, the more important part in life was unreal to me. Nobody ever died. It was as if they simply took off their costumes and makeup. The year after Westcliff, Joe and me were back as ugly sisters in Hull. Someone in the previous company had sprayed across the back of the iron safety curtain in gold paint. Fairy godmother's rule, okay. Well. One night after the show, I went through the land of green ginger into the docks. And I met a middle-aged woman. She'd seen the panto and recognized me. She was impressed. 
flattered that I liked her. Not much to look at. But I took her for a drink. And the pub shut, and it was come back to my place time. But neither of us had anywhere to go. She lived with her mother, and I was in Dick's. Anyway, we took a taxi to Princess Avenue and went into Pearson Park. Mr. Bartlett, Mr. Jennings, and Miss Townsend, your call for the boudoir scene. She was my first fulfilled relationship. I used my belt. I never saw her through Rose's eyes once. Or maybe Rose had become so much a part of me that I couldn't tell. Nobody saw us. Billy, what you doing here? You'll be off. Where's Joe? The green room. He's not. I just come from there. And he's not on the fire escape. Well, I don't know where he is, then. Am I his keeper or am I his keeper? Well, you better find him and quick shop. <laughs> oh, come on. Oh, shit. Operator, can I help you? Uh, yes, I'm calling a Scarborough number and I'm getting unchainable. Would you check it for me, please? What number were you calling, sir? Scarborough, that's uh, 0723 354 577. Subscriber's name, Bartlett. If you just hold the line a moment, sir. Thank you. Joe. Billy, what are you doing here? I'm looking for you. Well, I'm just making a quick phone call. Well, why not use th It's private. Hello, caller. Look, I'll see you in the wings. Are you there, caller? Uh, yes, yes, operator. <laughs> Look, hurry up. We're nearly on. I'm sorry. Uh, yes? The Scarborough number you were calling is a discontinued line, sir. It can't be. The number was 0723. Uh, you have to refer to director inquiries. Maybe they can help you. Oh, right. Is there anything else, caller? No! You're off! Oh, shit! Got it? Yes, sir. No problem. It's been a hassle till I got hold of Matheson and he released it, but it's not to be removed from the cellophane. Right. Well, you can ask Mr. Wallace to make the tannoy announcement after this scene. Yes, sir. Just keep your eyes and ears open and see that none of the company leaves the theatre after the show. The station's sending back up to cover the doors. Right. Off you go. What is it, old chap? You look all... Uh, not really too good. I'll be fine. I'll be in my office, Jane, if anyone wants me. This is a message for the full company. A brooch, shaped like a mouse, will be found in the wing. If anybody has lost it, will they contact Wally in his office before curtain call? Thank you. There can't be many brooches shaped like mice. I know. Will you let me see it, please? What? The brooch. After the show. What's the matter with you? I'll show it to you then. You can have it. Why not in a boarding house? Who says? That's why I was off for the first time ever. I was telephoning Scarborough to see who answered. There's nobody there. The phone's been disconnected, Billy. What on earth's going on? I'm only trying to help. I know. So, the brooch? It's hers. Don't be dirty. It's not mine. So you see, it wasn't my fault. That proves it. What? I give up. I don't know what you're talking about. It's not mine, Joe. But after the final curtain. Oh, all right. I had to break free. I was rid of the boarding house. I had to be free of the rest. To start again. Just as Rose said. Even if that new start was the beginning of the end for me. Well, I was rid of her... I had to be rid of Panto, rid of the ugly sisters, rid of Cinderella. It was very easy. Karen had told Oz that she was off crack, but Joe was right. I knew she wasn't. I said I'd lend her some money. She thought she was being canny, but we both knew I'd never get it back. We met at Barclays, and I even drove her to Bankside to do the deal. 
the rest was easy. I was able to cast aside the spectacles. I left the brooch. I started to cover the body, but then I decided it wasn't worth it. I had, after all, to be retribution. All I wanted was to confuse the issue long enough to have that final walk down. I even left the board and the program on Joe's dressing table to add to the bewilderment. And so there I was. Ten minutes from the final walk down to a new beginning. It's only a small chance, I grant you, Johnson, but someone may recognize it. Whoever killed her is hardly likely to admit it's theirs. Sir. No, but someone may recognize it as belonging to the victim. It certainly doesn't belong to the murderer. It was too perfectly placed. Someone who goes to the trouble of covering the girl's face would certainly have noticed the brooch. I'd rather believe it was placed there to be found. Uh, come in. To throw suspicion on someone else. Uh, Wally! Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize you had people with you. Uh, it's all right, Joe. Come in. Uh, what did you want? It's about the brooch. I just wanted to see it. Uh, I think I know who it might belong to. Well, uh, I'm Detective Inspector Clifford. This is Detective Sergeant Johnson. Oh, I see. Uh, I'm Joe. Uh, Joe Jennings. Uh, Joe plays Amphibia, one of the ugly sisters. Uh, so, uh, about the brooch. Uh, if I could see it. Sergeant. Uh, can I check it out of this? I'm afraid not. But why? You can it? see it clearly enough, can't you? It's a gold mouse with ruby eyes. Taste and glass, of course, nothing special. Costume jewelry. So, who do you think it belongs to? Come on, Joe. You, 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 you've got to say it's very serious. What's happened? Just tell us, Mr. Jennings. I think it belongs to Billy. Uh, that's Billy Bartlett, the other ugly sister. Why is it in a package? It's like evidence. You didn't find it backstage, did you? No, we didn't. Then where? Uh, would you sit down for a moment, Mr. Uh, Jennings? Jennings, this. Now, what I'm going to tell you now must not be repeated, whatever the circumstances. What is it, love? What's on it? I'm all right, Gwen. I'm all right. Just leave me. Shall I get somebody? No. No, it's nervous stomach, that's all. Please go. I'll fetch Billy. No. No, I'll be all right. What? What's happening? Nothing. Joe's been sick. Badly. I'm all right. Honestly. Well, I'll leave you then, if you're sure. I'm sure. I just came to tell Billy about the brooch, in case he missed the mess. It's, it's sorted. Right. I've got, I've got some alcohol. So I don't need it. No. Well, then. Better get ready for the walk down. Let's do that. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. You saw Wally about the brooch. You should have waited till after the show. Boom, 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 boom. Why couldn't you wait? You're like Rose. Boom, 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 boom. He didn't find it backstage. After the show. Not now. Yes. Billy, your mother. I told them about the boarding house. They won't find her. Stand by for walk down, everyone. Stand by for a final walk down. <laughs> Why? Don't worry, Joe. I understand. You. <laughs> Everything will be all right in the end.
BBC Carter, sir. Emphasis in the car park now, sir. Back up car up front of the theater. Thank you, Carter. No one's to be allowed to leave the stage, son. No, sir. And don't be too eager, Sergeant. Let him get off us. Mr. Barlow. Really? You told them I was dead. Could you say that? I wish I was. If I was dead, I wouldn't feel this... this terrible hurt. You told people I died on the 10th of November. That was the day I said I was selling the house and going to live in Weymouth. I wasn't doing it just for me. I was doing it for you. I used to say to your father, life is to be lived in this life. Here, now, not for hereafter. And I say to you... I can't hear dead people, Rose. I'll say what I have to say, whether you can hear me or not. And I say to you, life is in the real world, as it is, Billy, to be lived through and coped with, not as you imagine it to be. And I am not defending you any longer. You think I didn't know, that I didn't know what you were up to. Well, I think now that perhaps deep down I did. But I closed my eyes to it. Because it was too dreadful. Well, that time's over. They've asked me to give evidence against you. And I will. The way to the underworld is easy. But to withdraw your steps and to make a way to the upper air, that's the labour. That's hard, Billy. It's your job now. Stand up. Be responsible for what you are. Be responsible for your actions. I told you, Rose. I can't hear dead people. A fear of life after life, of retribution, sometimes brings me to my knees, just as it did in Wakefield after those Saturday mornings when I dared to go to the ABC cinema. Looking back on the events of the last three years, when I acted without hindrance, without being threatened by the wrath of God or my father or the mark of Satan, once I'd cast off my rose-coloured spectacles with only my still small voice as guidance. I realised it was a terrific thing to have been able to indulge, to complete my relationships as I wanted. But nevertheless, I am sometimes reduced to terror, particularly in the middle of the night the two o'clock time when the teachings of the peculiar people surface in my mind and this morning after Rose had gone I swear I noticed the beginnings of a small blue mark here on my forehead just below the hairline Death of an Ugly Sister by John Peacock starred Billy, played by Roy Barraclough, and Joe, played by Paul Shane. 
the company was Petra, tonight playing Cinderella, Linda Regan. Harry as Darren Hard. Up. John Alfred. Tina Townsend, Horribilis Hard Up, and Fairy Godmother, Tina Gray. Gwen is the wardrobe mistress, Jilly Mears. Wally, company manager, Gordon Reed. Jane, ASM, Annabelle Mullion. Oz, and Buttons, Christopher Simon. Charlie as Zandini, Oliver Clinton. Dougie as Prince Charming, David Lerner. Detective Inspector Clifford, Crawford Logan. Detective Sergeant Johnson, Peter Yap. Matheson, Michael Tudor Barnes. The telephone operator, Betty Hindley. And Rose, Sandra Bowe. The young Billy was played by James Deacon. Musical direction and keyboards were by Trevor Allen Davis, with Herbie Flowers on double bass and Mark Doffman on drums. Stage management was by Richard Beesmore, Anne Bunting, and Rebecca Kirby. In the prompt corner, Joanna Kyle. The director was Ned Chayet.